Hi, I'm Susan Hirsch from Meet the Experts. Every season, women spend money on a new wardrobe to freshen their look. A lot of women forget about their hair. It's important for you to change your hair as the seasons pass. I'm here at Mitsu New York on Park Avenue with senior stylist Lily Yip, and she will demonstrate how a haircut can transform your look this coming season. Hi, Lily. Hi, Susan. Lovely to see you. Thank you for having me here today. Oh, absolutely. So tell me, what is the trend this season for hairstyles? What are women asking for this year? Well, I find that most women still enjoy having medium to long hair. It's fun. They have a lot of options. Some of the trend is more creating bangs, <laughs> long fringes, so that they can sweep them over, roll it, put it up. So I find that's the trend. There are many reasons why after 40 a woman's hair thins. It could be a thyroid condition, under or overactive. It could be a nutritional deficiency, diabetes. What do you recommend to actually give volume to the hair? Because women obviously don't want to wear a wig. They want to no. have gorgeous, glamorous <laughs> hair. That's definitely a factor. I think the things that you mentioned, thyroid, hormone, it's a huge issue. Definitely seek a professional, like doctor, a dermatologist. Then take care of yourself. Vitamins, I find soy very beneficial. It promotes new growth, which is great. And it also gives you shine. And then also, I'm sure that actually cutting the hair a certain way will give volume. Right, so if a client finds that they're, they're losing a little bit of the volume, the hair gets a little dull, you wanna kinda start layering it, texturizing it, um, teach them how to style their hair to create, you know, maximum volume. Products also helps. Which is probably what, shampoos and conditioners, conditioners. out there that are specifically for volume. Mm -hmm. And Orbe has a great line, so they can always, um, a, a product called Volume Mista. Um, the way you can style it, you know, turn your head upside down, going sideways, back and forth, that also creates volume. So when there's you go many sideways, ways. you mean actually <laughs> Uh, blow drying your hair to one side, side and then and blow drying it to the, the other way. Side. So this also leads to hair shedding. I know that a lot of women are literally have locks of hair that are also falling out. So this probably goes back to maybe what you were implying before about nutrition and making sure that you're getting vitamins. You mentioned soy. Right. And the shedding part, by the time you notice it, it's actually been happening for a while. Stress takes three months to show up on your hair. So when you're stressed, three months later, you're gonna see, you're gonna see more hair on your pillow, hair on the floor. So you really should be more proactive and go see a professional. Women have become so much more comfortable today using curling irons, flat irons, hot rollers. They used to just at one time only use a blow dryer. So I have to ask you, what do you recommend to really prevent the damage that can take place from all this heat to the hair? Well, that's definitely a lot of choices out there nowadays. I found the best way to style your hair is finger dry your hair, use a protective item product such as the oil base. Um, there's a product out there called Royal Blowout. You can, you can spray that on before you style. It creates a lot of volume. It's also heat protection against the iron, the heat, which is great. So there's something out there to shield the heat. Yes, and then there's an anti humidity spray that actually prolongs your blow dry so you don't even have to do it every day. And then also I suppose you could also use Velcro rollers because that's not heat. Right and it's the best way to prolong your, your dry again because you really want to start styling it every day with the hot tools because that will really damage your hair. So how does a woman go back to her natural hair color if she <laughs> has gray? Well you have beautiful gray hair. Thank you. Well, it, the transition is very difficult. So I suggest that looking at the, the true base tone on their hair and then putting some highlights, low lights, that works well to smooth the process, the transition much easier. I, I do know that a lot of women have asked me when they see me, how did I transition? But you have to realize that I transitioned at 29. <laughs> I stopped coloring my hair. But um, I think also, one would have to come to you to get their hair cut maybe every six weeks or so. Yeah, definitely more frequently because now you're doing another process over your, your single and your ends tend to get really dry and oxidized from the color. 
So yes, you're probably gonna come in six to eight weeks and then you, probably, you will have to do some care treatments at home or a salon that provides it so that you, you actually maintain some of that shine and volume in your hair. So I'm curious, how do you give life back to gray hair, dullness, and even yellowing, which can be a big issue? That is a big problem. Because a lot of women swim and the chlorine can turn their hair yellow. yellow. And there is, a, there is a product out there, like a color shampoo and conditioner. It's purple and it removes yellowing, which oh, is great. fantastic. And, and the dullness girls, you can always put a clear gloss. It's one process, takes half an hour. You can get the service in the salon. And it just puts a nice sheen is on the hair. Is that an expensive process to Oh, not do? at all. Menopause, which is an issue that we all have to deal with, actually, it creates brittleness for the hair, it makes the hair dull, and it also um, has lack of luster, and it can also become very limp. So what can we do to have our beautiful locks again that we had when we were in our 20s? Definitely this is true. I find that in the winter month, it's even harder for us to kind of maintain that natural oil on our body, whether it's on our scalp or on our body. Yes, that dryness of the scalp that we tend to get during the winter months. Mm -hmm. I find that if you were to use, take some supplements, such as um, any kind of protein, vitamin Bs, um, uh, salmon oil. Salmon oil? Yes. Okay, so that's good. I like to eat salmon. Mm -hmm. so I'm sure the omega-3. Right, the the omega-3 omega is great for our skin. As far as that scalp goes, you definitely want to avoid shampooing it with a very harsh shampoo. And can shampoo. Um, you want to do a very mild detergent product. Um, and how often should somebody be washing their hair? Because some women wash their hair every single day. Oh, uh, definitely not. I think that's a no-no. I would suggest to someone to wash it every other day or even every two days, three days. To allow the oil to build up. To build up. up. Because that's where you get the itching. And, and a lot of time, we use a um, dandruff shampoo thinking that's gonna help. Actually, that strips even more oil. Um, another way of preventing um, scalp irritation is really using a lower heat setting. An inch away from the scalp when you blow dry your hair. Of course, how many times are you with the blow dryer on top of the scalp trying to style your hair. Right. And meanwhile, you probably don't even realize it, but you're burning your scalp. Well, you're burning your scalp, you're burning the hair when the, when the dryer is so close to the hair because you try to do it quick. You try to thinking that you're, the closer you get, the better the dryer is gonna be. And the faster you get out <laughs> yeah. of the house. So actually, avoiding those things will make your life and make your scalp much, much happier. And what about products? Shea butter, I know, is something that they use in the cosmetic industry or oils. Is, is it a good idea to get products with oils yeah, in them? Yeah, because we lack of oil. If anything, your hair needs the oil, needs some moisture. That's why you also want to use conditioners. It takes away some of the flyaways. It takes away from static in the, in the winter. There's a Moroccan oil out there. It's very, very light. Ooh, sounds exotic. Yes, and you just run that from mid to your ends, and it gives you that shine. It's light. And it just, when you move, you just feel like you are very exotic. So what are your favorite products? Oh, my favorite products still all day. I love it. I find it very clever, the way they create a line that actually have so much oil, extracts, protein in it to promote, again, volume, sheen. Um, the, um, the treatment line is fantastic. So Orbe has a treatment line yes. specifically there's here. a mask, shampoo, for anyone, any kind, any hair type. So tell me, how often do your clients come to see you? What's the typical cycle for getting your hair cut? If it's a good haircut and it works well with your face shape and it works well with you and you know how to take care of it, I think you can stretch it as long as you want. And then, you know, when you realize it's time, your hair will tell you. Lily, thank you so much. It's been so informative. We've learned so much about hair today. Oh, you're very welcome. So the next time you go to your salon, make sure that you have a comfortable relationship with your stylist because it's very intimate and you wanna make sure that you get the right haircut. Until the next time, I'm Susan Hirsch from Meet the Experts.